Let's look at five common sports design textures and how to use them in Photoshop. So first of all, all the textures I use in this video, I grabbed from Adobe Stock's free collection. If you have an Adobe subscription, I think you should have access to Adobe's free collection. They have a ton of good stock photos that you can use for your designs. It probably took me way too long to realize that it was a thing, so here I am passing down this knowledge to you. First texture we're gonna look at is a grunge texture. These grunge textures, just as a category, come in so many different shapes and sizes. You will see a variety of different patterns, but generally the idea is it's kind of this like grittier texture, oftentimes black with white details on it. So that means I'm gonna switch the blend mode to screen. When you switch the blend mode to screen, that's basically gonna take all of the blacks out of that layer. So we're just left with the white and lighter parts of the grunge layer. So this is fine. You can play with the opacity too from here and also drag it, you know, above the player if you wanted it affecting the whole design or if you just wanted it in the background, maybe above the name too. We can lower the effect by reducing the opacity just by clicking and sliding our opacity word to the right. And if you wanted like black details on this background, see so how there's already like a yellow and black theme in this graphic for the Oakland Spiders, we can invert this grunge image and do that by holding Command and hitting I. And you can also go up to Image, Adjustments, Invert, if you forget the shortcut. But now we have a white image with black details on it. So now we can switch this blend mode to Multiply. And you'll see we have black details on our yellow background now. So Multiply is the opposite of screen, basically takes out all of the white parts of the layer. So reducing the opacity, you're left with a slightly more interesting background than just the flat yellow one we started with. So next up, we're gonna look at paper textures. I've got three of them downloaded. First, let's look at a ripped paper texture. Ripped paper, you'll see in a lot of designs, you can use it a variety of different ways. So this particular image I have is a ripped paper surrounded by black on either side. To get rid of that black, again, I'm gonna switch the blend mode to screen. Now we're just left with the rips. And you know, we can use this a variety of ways. You could have a rip like going through your design, maybe at an angle. If you hit Command T, that's the shortcut to transform. You can then rotate this image however you like. And I can expand it up just by holding Shift. And let's say we wanted something like this where he's standing on, on some background and we have like a ripped yellow thing going behind our subject. And you can see this one isn't perfectly black because we can see like the outline of the edge of the layer right here. So to get rid of that, you can go into the image adjustments and I like curves, you can use levels too, but basically just bring down the blacks until you can't see that line anymore and you can create contrast basically by bringing down the blacks and then creating another point up here on the curve and lifting the whites. So we'll hit OK. And then you can also see it's not totally white in the image either. So we kind of see through that. You want to get rid of that. Let's just color in by making a new layer. And with our brush tool, let's just color in white to, well, we don't need a super soft brush, but that's OK just to hide that, that remaining yellow hue. So pretty clean split of the background here with this one rip. The other way you can use rip textures is to basically make a border of ripped paper around the edges. So let's delete this and we'll take our original ripped layer and just rotate it. And then I'm gonna move this just with the move tool selected to about there and then command J is duplicate. I'm gonna drag this one over. Again, this is all just with my move tool selected. We can rotate this one a little bit more this way so it's maybe not coming in as much. And then again, Command J, we can Command T to transform. And then this one we will place at the top and bottom. So something like this for the bottom edge, and then one more Command J, and we'll bring this one up top. So like this is definitely a look that you'll see in some designs where it's got like 
subtly ripped edges and you know it's up to you how much you want to use this effect you can really like barely show the ripped you can show more of the ripped so that's ripped paper we also have creased paper we can drag in this creased paper texture which in this case is just like a, a quarter folded piece of paper we can lay this over you could do this over the entire design if i drag this to the very top over all of our layers and then switch the blend mode to multiply then we have like our player being affected too, but you could also just use this on the background. We can also lower the effect of this again. So this, this creased paper just creates a little bit more depth to the design and, and kind of combining it with this grunge layer gives a cool effect where it feels like the background is maybe a good bit behind him, whereas this floor that he's standing on is definitely in the foreground. The one other paper texture I see is glued paper. This is something you'd probably see going over the top of the whole design. And we can, let's rotate this vertically just so it fits our canvas a bit better. This gives your design the effect that the whole thing was glued down, basically it gives these wrinkles in your image. So again, we'll set the blend mode to multiply. Anytime you have a mostly white image with darker details on it, multiply is gonna be your best bet. But I do encourage you to play around with any of these blending modes, especially within the multiply category for these mostly white photos and then within the screen category. So you'll see these like dividing lines on the blend modes menu. And I would just recommend you, you definitely experiment within those and see what effect works best for what you're working with. And again, just give it a little bit more detail going over the top of everything. And maybe it does make more sense to have it horizontal in this case. And now we have this like paper looking texture over the whole design. So the next thing we can look at is light particles. I can bring in this texture I found on Adobe Stock and it just has this like light coming down from above with all of these white dots attached to it. Again, because it's like a darker looking texture, we're gonna switch this blend mode to screen, but I could see eh, color dodge is probably a little bit aggressive, but some of these other ones might work too. I can see linear dodge being okay. We'll go with screen for now. And if this is like too dramatic of an effect, we can adjust the contrast again, or just move the whole image up. Like if we just wanted these light particles showing and not so much of like the streaking light and we didn't want such a faded, effect at the top. You can always move these textures around. And again, you can see like it's not perfectly black down here. We can see the dividing line. So I would just recommend you take a mask to your layer by clicking the mask icon, go into your brush, black brush, and you can brush away just the bottom of the design. You can also go in to the blending options of this layer by double clicking in this gray area and bring down the blacks or blend the blacks basically by bringing this slider this way. And if you hold option, you can split the arrows so it's a more gradual fade. Let's see how this kind of takes away some of that fade from the top and is just keeping the, the very white parts of the layer, which in this case are, are these white particles up top. Another texture you can look at is dust and scratches. I didn't find a great example of this on Adobe Stock, so you might wanna look around elsewhere, but I found this image, it's kind of grungy, it's a little bit busy, but what we can do is basically strip this down so we're just getting the, the very white specks of this and play with those rather than just like the general wash of this texture. Although, I mean, you can, we can see, like if you set it to screen, yeah, like this is a look, but maybe it's a little bit busy. So similar to what we just did with the light particles, I'm gonna go in by double clicking this layer and then going to the blending options, blend if gray, and then we'll again split this current layer and bring in these sliders. So we're really just left with the white specks in this case. And I can hide the light particles just so we can isolate this layer. But dust and scratches, you'll see a lot just going over the top of everything in different designs. It makes your design feel a little bit more gritty, a little bit more raw. I don't know the terms, but if we want a more subtle effect, like we can, we can bring this thing over to the left and maybe even duplicate the layer if we wanted a little bit more detail over there. 
And then you can always like play around with the masking of these too. So just clicking on your mask icon and a black brush will hide anything on this layer. So it's basically like erasing. So just painting in black the parts we don't want to see. And then we're just left with a more subtle kind of white dusty texture to the whole design. And like we did with the grunge texture, you could also invert this if you wanted black specs instead of white. So if I duplicate this layer and then I'm gonna delete this layer mask too, and then we'll reset the blending options. I'm just gonna go up to multiply and invert it by holding command and hitting I. And now going back into the blending options, now we're gonna blend the opposite side. We'll blend the whites in. So we're just left with the blacks. And I don't like this big smudge, so let's mask that out by clicking our mask icon and taking a black brush to that part. So now we've got a mix of black and white on the background going over everything. Last thing we'll go over is grain. Grain is super simple and pretty effective. To see the full effect, I'm just gonna hide all of our other textures right now and including all the ripped and grunge stuff. I don't think we have any grain on this right now. Yeah, so let's make a new layer over the top of everything. Command A selects the whole canvas, and then with my quick selection tool, W is a shortcut, you can just right click in the middle of our selection and then go down to fill. We're gonna fill this with 50% gray and hit okay. And now deselecting with Command D, Let's go up to filter, and first we're gonna convert it for smart filters, so we can work non-destructively if we wanna edit our grain later. And then we're gonna go up to filter, noise, add noise. And yeah, let's just set this amount pretty high so you can see the overall effect on video. And then we're gonna set this blend mode to, I would say either soft light or hard light. Hard light is a bit too intense for this design, so let's go with soft light. But depending on what color your design is and what textures you have active, you might want something softer or harder. But you can see when you zoom in to this texture and the before and after, it just kind of gives a base level feel, a base level amount of texture to the whole design. So you can see without it, everything just looks a little bit too smooth. This will kind of blend everything in a bit better, especially if you're using different photos and compositing something in your design. It's always nice to just have a layer of grain and it makes it look like everything came from the same place or everything goes together. The other thing I've been playing with recently is distorting the grain a little bit. So going up to filter, distort, and wave. You can play with these settings. I have mine set to a square wave right now and I'm just going pretty high on the wavelength so we can see this well. But hitting OK, it kind of gives this like glitchy effect to some of the edges. We can switch this to hard light so you can see it a little bit better. So that's definitely a vibe for like certain designs and something I've been having fun with recently. But I think the, the idea of like playing with your textures and warping them as you need to that is also a way you can just open up your world of possibilities with how you're using textures in your designs.